fulfill the, the command of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's told us so many things, so many beautiful things to do. Why can't we protect ourselves against evil? What is this obstacle based upon? Is it based upon motivation? Am I not motivated? <clears throat> Wake up and go to the masjid for fajr? Is it a motivation? Is it an ability? Do I, have a, do I lack the ability? I simply cannot get to the masjid. Some people blame, I just can't wake up early. Or I can't, I can't focus enough to drive the car. I'm just, it's just not possible. But if you put a million bucks just down the road, you'll get in this car so you can be the guy that's walking. He'll do it. So it's not an ability thing, it's not a motivation thing, is it? Perhaps a knowledge. He doesn't have the knowledge to implement these things. It's quite simple. I have that. Our deen is very extensive and it has a lot of avenues and knowledge is important. But to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one doesn't require much knowledge at all. We know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to pray a salah in the masjid. We know He wants us to pray extra salahs, etc. All the things that we've done, very basic things. So it's, it's not a lack of knowledge, nor is it a lack of piety. Oh, it's only the pious ones that go to the masjid for pleasure. It's only the pious ones that stay behind and pray extra salah. It's only the pious ones that come early, pray salah, listen to the khutbah, etc., etc. Is it a matter of piety? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that, it, that piety is not whether you face the east or the west. It's not about the action that you're doing. Piety does not equal action. But piety is simply the person that believes in Allah on the last day. So yes, we have piety. But then what is it for stopping us from doing these things? And if we look at people that discuss motivation, life coaching, etc., they talk about how to motivate. This is their job. They motivate people to do business, they motivate people to fix their relationships, etc. And they ask them these questions. Why can't we do it? And they boil it down to this concept of what we focus on. It's extremely important what we are focusing on. Do we focus on the action itself? Do we rely upon the action to tell me whether I've reached my goal or not? So whether I come to Fajr or I don't come to Fajr, then that determines my success or failure? Or is it the actual goal that we have, which is so clear and simple, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And no matter what situation that I'm in, we can gain the pleasure of Allah. Sometimes we're in a situation which is extremely difficult to get to the masjid for Fajr. So is my success in doing the action? Is my success in doing the action or is my success in fulfilling the, my goal? So our focus should always be first and foremost on the goal. And another thing that they talk about is what they, a concept they call overchunking. Overchunking is, for example, if I want to create, if, I, if I've forgotten an assignment at school, for example. So what's the, there's sort of two different ways you can look at it. The teacher gives an assignment to a school, and there's two different reactions. The first reaction is the most common one. Oh, another assignment. What's going to happen now? And they start thinking about all these painful things that are associated with the assignment. They're thinking that what they're doing is called overchanking. They're saying, I'm not going to be able to do it. I've got a month's time, and I've got so many hours that I'm going to have to put into it. It's too difficult, it's too much, it's not going to happen. But if we reduce the chance, for example, we say, okay, I've got a month, but I've got four weeks, right? And in this week, I can achieve a quarter, that's a bit more possible. It's a bit more possible to achieve this. But even still, it's, what am I going to do today? Right, so I'm now picking my battles. They say, you, you shouldn't bite more than what you can chew, right? So we're taking these things and we're looking at them, piece by piece. How do we achieve our goal? Firstly, we know what our goal is, is Allah. And how do we achieve our goal? Is following the Prophet Sallallahu footsteps. But unfortunately, we take it as, we overchunk it, we overthink it, we take it all wholesale or nothing. We say, I'm not going to be able to do this because if I come to Fajr in the morning, then I'm going to have to wear a turban. And I'm going to have to stay for the talk. I'm going to have to make extra dhikr. I'm going to have to become one of those pious people. Right? And what is this person going to think of me? What is that kind of person going to think of me? And then they're going to start recognizing my face. 
And when I don't come for the salah next time, they're going to start judging me. Why didn't I come? I'd rather just stay away. It's better nobody knows my face. So this is overchunking. We're going to the masjid. It's something that's very simple. Get in the car, turn the key, go, pray the salah, go home again. This is something that is bite-sized, easy, something we can achieve. But the problem is we, we then overchunk things. May Allah Ta'ala allow us to focus on our objective and to um, take things for what they are. So you see a very different focus of a person who achieves his goal over a person who doesn't achieve his goal. I'll give you another example. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was with his family, he would be very, very engaged with his family. Basically what he's doing is taking one chunk and living in the moment. Right? So he's living that moment, he's not over chunking things, he's not taking things for more than what they are. He's just enjoying his family. And then, and then they would say that as soon as that adhan would go off, it was as, as if he didn't even recognize us. The Prophet didn't even recognize us, so it seemed, after the time of Fajr, uh, the time of the Salah, as soon as the adhan goes off, his focus changed. So, uh, uh, on top of everything, the focus is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in order to achieve that, there are certain things that we need to do. For example, we have an assignment to do, but we have certain tasks to get to the assignment, and at the end of the thing, we learn something. We get a certificate. Saying we are trying to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the event goes off, we start focusing on exactly that one, one thing that we should be focusing on. And praying a salah is very easy. Praying salah is not difficult. So we take that salah, we get ready for the salah, and then we go to the masjid. But say we get to the masjid early, there's five minutes left. In our minds, if we were to say, I'm going to pray my, all my sunnah salahs, every single day, yes, we make an intention, but sometimes it, we feel like it's over chunking, we feel it's very difficult, because we go through that whole thing within our minds. If I, if I pray all my sunnah salahs, then what if I miss, and what if this happens, and what if I don't have enough time, and what if I don't get as much enough, etc., etc. So we over chunk things. But if we get to the masjid, and we have five minutes to spare, then it's very easy for us now, with keeping in mind the focus of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to achieve our, our goal by praying our sunnah salah. And then when we pray our sunnah salah, we can focus on that. So remember the key thing that we start off saying is how we achieve our goals is to focus. We change our what we're focusing on. And we're focusing on one thing at a time. We don't, whilst we're in our sunnah salah, we're not thinking about our fatah salah. We're not thinking about what's going to happen later, what's going to have already happen, etc. We just focus. And then when we find that focus, we get the khushu' and salah. And then when we get the khushu' and salah, then these things become beloved to us. They become something that is very easy, something that is manageable. And then my grandfather used to say, May Allah guide him, that don't borrow sorrow from tomorrow. Don't think, if you're in the moment now, just enjoy the moment. If you think something is going to be happening, don't borrow sorrow from tomorrow. The problem is, a lot of the time, we, the, the reason why so much, uh, you can say, depression and all these yeah. ill feelings and feeling like I can't, I'm, I'm not a very good Muslim, what does Allah really think of me, does He really like me, what do my fellow Muslims think of me, all these kind of things come down to us because we are not achieving our goals. <coughs> We're not achieving our goals and this is exactly why. Because we are not focusing on bite-sized things that we can manage. And they, they mentioned that the definition of happiness is achieving a goal. The moment just before a person achieves a goal, he is the most happy he can ever be. So this is something that is extremely important for us to, to move forward in our religion. So what happens to a person if he has the objective of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He knows he should be getting the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what happens to a person when he fails in doing that, when he falls into this trap, which is very common, within not only religion, but in business, education, family, we put everything aside because it seems difficult, it feels painful to even think about it. So what happens in this situation? What happens when I, I, I feel that if I was to pray to Hajjot, I would get close to Allah. But I continuously find myself making excuses and feeling that I don't, 
sort of associating and playing with it, putting it off to tomorrow. So what's going to happen is obviously a person's confidence is going to go down. And not only the confidence we can bring to Hajjah, but then the hat is going to affect other things. So it's extremely, extremely important we have a very short time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa la'asri inna l'insana nafi al-khusr illa l'ina amanu wa amanu wa salihat By the token of time, time is ticking. We have the time now, we need to focus. All people, all mankind are lost, except for those who believe and perform pious deeds. This performing of pious deeds is so important. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, whenever He talks about people of faith, people of Iman, He talks about people who perform pious deeds, people who do a'mal. And of course, we are restricted by time, so we must be spending our time wisely. So this time is ticking, and if we allow ourselves to carry on feeling like these tasks are too difficult, they're putting them off and saying next week, tomorrow, then tomorrow is never going to come. We need to start focusing on small tasks. We need to take bite-sized pieces. Like, the, like I just mentioned, you, you should not bite off more than what you can chew. And you see a lot of people that are successful, and that's their personality. Whether they're successful in business or education or in their deen, you'll see that the difference between a person is their focus. A person takes every single moment and they say, well, in this time that I have, now I can achieve this, which is part of my goal. My goal is to make, for example, a business to make money, so this is what I can do today to do that. And tomorrow I'm going to do this, and then this, and then this. It's utilizing their time wisely. But for us, we want to get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So today, what can I do? Right now, what can I do? And never lose focus. There is no other objective other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we keep that in the top of our mind, how vast our religion is, we will always find that there is something that we can do at a particular moment to achieve our goal. And therefore, we will find our happiness. We will find that exhilarating feeling that a person gets when they are about to achieve their goal. And we hope for the happiness of Allah. Of course, we ask Him to forgive us for our mistakes, but we ask Him also to accept us amongst those who are his, his favor. So, and then on the other side, what happens to a person when this happens, when a person becomes focused, when a person realizes that all I need to do is make wudu quickly, it doesn't, doesn't take long, stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then all my worries are gone. What happens to a person who, who has that in his arsenal? How would a person walk through the dunya if he knows that Tonight, I'm going to stand up in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just a simple task he has to stand up in front of Allah. He will walk through this world proud. He will feel like he can achieve anything. And if he goes through a hard day, then he knows when he comes home, he can, he can, he can gain that connection with Allah. He can gain that khushur and his salah. But if a person finds it even difficult thinking about during the study of Salah, by the time he actually gets there, he feels like he has too much effort and he starts making excuses, etc. May Allah Ta'ala allow us to achieve that. It is very important that we be uh, specific in our, in our objective, keeping in mind that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is our, is our objective and we don't change that. We don't change our objective for anything. We change, if we were to focus, if we were to use our actions as a measurement to say whether we are happy or sad, then we would be at loss. Rather, what we do is we say, keeping our focus on our objective other, rather than our actions is the, the key to success. So in a situation, like we mentioned, it might be very difficult to perform certain actions, but my objective remains the same. I'm achieving the same goal. My focus must be on my objective, not even on my actions. Because we, were, we know from our various ahadith, we're not going to enter into paradise because of our actions. So our focus, yes, we need to perform those actions and we need to focus on them individually. But when we're talking about our objective, the objective that we need to focus on is Allah and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which 
fold it in the hadith, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which comes in various forms. عَجَبَ لِعَبْدِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٌ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّاهُ شَكَرًا فَكَانَتْ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاهُ صَبْرًا فَكَانَتْ خَيْرًا لَهُ That in any situation, this very, very strange thing, very amazing, is all the matters of a believer. They are all for him the best. And the matters of a believer are very good for him. And this is not like, this is not for anybody except for a believer. What does that mean? That if some sort of good afflicts a person or befalls a person, he has sugar and that is good for him. And if a person is inflicted with something of difficulty, then he has sabr and that is good for him. So in any situation we are going to find ourselves in, which is going to vary Throughout, throughout life. Every situation is going to be different. Every year is going to be different. Every decade is going to be different. And every generation is also going to be different. Sometimes we will, be, we will have ups. Sometimes we will have downs. Our daily routines change. Our jobs change. Our relationships change. But if that one thing remains true, the maqsood of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala achieving the happiness of Allah, and then we take how do we achieve that goal in this situation? And we assess that by saying, well, I'm going to pray my salah now. My salah stays the same. Perhaps I have more time to pray my salah in certain days than others. But no matter what, if my objective remains to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then all of my methods will be good. And this is only exclusively for Muslim. Because of this factor, because of the one objective that we have that overrides everything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to focus on Allah to never lose focus on Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we can see in all of our actions that we do, we always make an intention. And what is the most important thing of that intention? Of course, after what action I'm doing, is that it's for Allah. We always say, Billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is for Allah. We never lose focus of that. That never ever should leave us. As soon as that leaves us, then our actions are worth nothing. Allah ta'ala allow us that our actions are very fruitful, that they are, are fulfilling the objective and that we are not wasting our time because that time is very precious for us.